it's our community. Come on in. I have an interesting neighbor for you to meet. Her name is Julie Mulhern. And she isn't creepy, but she writes mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a pleasure, a real pleasure to have you, Julie. And I told her that, um, see, I, I'm a mystery book addict. So I'm very picky and hard to please. And I truly like this book. Oh, thank you. And I, I want to talk to you about it. Now, we've got to be really careful here mm -hmm. because the name of this book is The Deep End, The Country Club Murders. But we have to be really careful because I don't want to give this plot away because I want you to go and buy the book. You've written four, have you not? Mm -hmm. Now, this is number one. That's number one. And number four comes out October 25th. October 25th. How long does it take you to write one of these? Four months. Four months? Well, that's not too mm -hmm. bad. That's not too bad. We're going to talk about it. We've got to be careful because we don't want to give too much away. This is a secret. So Julie Mulhern, The Deep End, The Country Club Murders. I recommend it highly, and now we're going to dissect it. And I'm going to start out because I thought um, the, the back of the book is often has some really kind of interesting. And that first paragraph says, Welcome to the Club. And it says, Swimming into the lifeless body of her husband's mistress tends to ruin a woman's day, and indeed it does. Uh, but becoming a murder su suspect can ruin her whole life, which it almost did. It was wonderful. And so, what I want to um, talk about is. First of all, what made you decide to write mysteries? You could have written anything, because you write well. Well, thank and, you. And there's a certain humor in it, which I like, too. So what decided? I love mysteries. I grew up loving, I mean, from Nancy Drew to Agatha Christie, that sort of progression. Um, I went through a period where I was reading Dorothy Sayers and Agayo Marsh and all that sort of thing. So I've always loved mysteries. and. It just seemed like the right time. You just opened your hand and out it flowed. Mm -hmm. You know, I, when you said Nancy Drew, I had to laugh because uh, when I loved Nancy Drew, Mr. I had them all. And I would, on Saturday, we lived near the plaza, <laughs> so I would walk to Bennett Snyder's on the mm -hmm. plaza, and I believe the Nancy Drew, Mr. I can't remember if they were 25 cents or 50 cents, but they were not too expensive, but of course, you know, money is uh, worth less today than it used to be. and But I love those Nancy Drew mysteries. And Agatha Christie is special. I think one of the reasons I like this book was you didn't depend on eviscerating everybody in there mm -hmm. uh, and seeing how much blood was in a human body. It, it depends on the plot. And that is um, how, oh, by the way, we need to tell you that Julie won in 2014 the Golden Heart um, finalist. Mm -hmm. Now, is that for only mystery writers? Well, actually, that was for a different book. I understand, but, but, was but it, a, it was a mystery. It was a romance. Oh, it was a romance? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh my. Mm -hmm. so that was my first book. That was your first book. Mm -hmm. well, but see, you know, that's a real honor to get a, be a finalist for your first book. So why did you switch from romance to mystery? You know, romance is easier, a lot of people start with romance because the, the recipe is set forth in the first so many pages you have to do this and in the middle so many mm -hmm. pages you have to do something else and nothing ever goes wrong. It always ends up happily ever after. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. So what made you make the switch? You know, I wrote a romance and uh -huh. I, it was good enough to final in the Golden Heart. It was good enough to get me an agent uh -huh. and all that happened very quickly and I thought, ha, ha, ha. I'm set, and then it didn't sell, and it didn't sell, and I got tired of waiting for it to sell and decided that I really would prefer to write mysteries, especially since the romance wasn't selling, and I made the switch, and then they both sold. So oh, They both sold? Uh -huh. Oh, that's mm -hmm. terrific. So did you win the award before or after it started to sell? Or did before. It was a finalist before, oh, before. It, for an I unpublished see, manuscript. Pretty. And mm -hmm. then you won the Sheila Award. And mm -hmm. tell me what, the, I don't know what that is. The Sheila is, um, uh, that was an award for a mainstream novel um, given by, oh gosh, you got me, Mary. Well, but was that for a mystery? That was for, the, yes, book. that book. This book won mm -hmm. the Sheila Award. Oh. And recently that book won the Holt Medallion, which is kind of a bigger deal, Oh. for um, Best Mainstream Novel of 2015. Julie. And um, it was a finalist in the Daphne du Maurier 
Awards for 2015. Do you think this is the best book you've written of the four? No. No. I love it. It's my first. Yeah. But I, there are others that I think might have a little bit more depth. Did you bring the same characters along? Mm -hmm. So once you get a good yeah. set, you mm -hmm. keep it. Okay. So let's talk about how, how did you decide on who should be the actors in this play? How, do you think about that first? Because we're talking about the first book right. now. So mm -hmm. you started out at ground zero. I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. I um, I started out with the idea of somebody floating in a country club pool, and obviously dead. And yes. <laughs> why was she dead, and who killed her? And I figured out who killed her, and I figured out my heroine, Ellison Russell, and everything sort of grew from there. Uh -huh. So, uh, I guess the point is here, in my mind, there are a number of characters in this mm -hmm. book. So you had to put together the cast first. Is that what you do first? I sort of walked into the mist a little bit Did with you? this. Uh, I knew about Allison. I knew about her mother, who plays a kind of a role. Yes, she does. And um, I knew that I had a detective who followed the rules compulsively mm -hmm. and a lawyer who didn't. And, and these people you dreamed up first? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. And... Um, so, um, what, see, I just, I think it is so interesting to figure out what goes through an author's mind. The creative process. Now, the body mm -hmm. in the pool is her husband's mistress. Yes. And not the first uh, no. peccadillo. No. So, she is not unaware of his ramblings and mm -hmm. about. But what made you decide that this mistress should go? rather than the husband. You could have murdered the husband. I could have murdered the husband, but I, I'm visual enough that you I like to the, suffer. <laughs> well, I liked the idea of the dress in the pool and yes. that sort of a look. And, um, you know, the, the idea of sort of, not even frenemies, because they're not really friends, but mm -hmm. enemies who have to be polite to each other and that sort of thing. And, you know, Real, realistically, Allison would have wanted Madeline dead. So, well, I would think. But then there were a, a few others that might have she might have wished that would join her as well. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it could have been a a, a, a multiple murder. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. But but you know what was kind of interesting and what made the plot thicken almost immediately because in the first chapter the body is there, mm -hmm. so the plot has to. And you lose me if it if it gets slow at the beginning, I'm lost. But this didn't. The plot thickened right away. But they couldn't get anybody in the country club. This was the country club pool, and they couldn't get anybody in the country club to identify possible suspects because, as you point out, it was social suicide. Yeah. Which brings us to the country club mentality. Um, did you, I don't want to say, did you have a country club in mind? I won't answer, I won't ask you that. But uh, there is a country club mentality. Mm -hmm. We all stick together and we, and that, that runs through the whole book. And it seems to me that those days are gone. I think so. I do. And so let's talk about that country club because that is the, the, the set, the backdrop. Let's talk about that a little bit. See, because now it's time you've, you've decided on your cast of characters. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the, the set, the backdrop. Well, if you think about most, we, we talked about Agatha Christie and Miss Marple and St. Yeah. Mary's Mead in this very small, almost claustrophobic community. Yes. A country club wasn't that different. Your social life, in many cases, your professional life, everything revolved around what was happening at the country club. That's right. And for mothers in the summertime, it revolved around swim team and golf and getting their kids to tennis and whatnot. And hanging and, out with the girls, mm -hmm, playing bridge and having lunch. Mm -hmm. That was their life. Yep. Because in those days, women did not work. Exactly. And uh, so. That was yeah, especially that class of women. They just didn't. They didn't. Um, it was interesting. 19, the book is set in 1974, and it was in 1974 that Jacqueline Onassis came back from Greece and got a job. 
and it sort and of started to shift. Horrified. I know, but it <laughs> opened up the idea that maybe you needed to be fulfilled beyond the bridge table. That's right. Well, and the other thing that kind of muddies the waters is that they were shocked that she got a job, and what could she do anyway? <laughs> Edit books. That's but. right, see. And, and I think that it was not a thought that was much in these ladies' heads to get a job. And some of them, you know, um, years ago I worked for the University of Kansas, and I saw a lot of women come through the Regent Center. And I would say to them, well, they, they would be in their, maybe their 50s, and they most likely were getting a divorce, or their life mm -hmm. was changing in some way, and they wanted to go to work. So I would say to them, well, now let's talk about what you have done. And they would look at me in a blank fashion and say, well, I haven't done anything. But that's not true, because many of these women have done, um, been the wagon master for some very large events mm -hmm. that they did as volunteers, but nevertheless were responsible for. So they had had a lot more experience than they really ever exactly. thought they'd had. Mm -hmm. And which I found sort of interesting because those of us who have worked all our lives, we have in one hand our resume, mm -hmm. you know, and it's always up to date and we take, keep track of what we have done. And, uh, but they didn't, they didn't yeah. think about that. And uh, so I, I, I do think, and the other thing that I liked about this country club mentality that you, you really, uh, did a, a, I thought, a very good job. It was clothing and fashion mm -hmm. and style. Talk about that a little bit. How oh, that you? was so much fun. I think when we think about the 1970s, we think about the, stu the cringe-worthy stuff, but um, socks with toes or rainbow socks with toes mm -hmm. or... Poofy like, hair? Poof well, that's 80s, really. Was that the 80s? I think, okay. I think, but yeah, I think you kind I've of got into so those toes. <laughs> LeMay clothing is towards the end of the decade, but in the early mm -hmm. decade you had Diane von Furstenberg and you had um, Missoni and all sorts of really Halston and sort of designers who defined the decade as well, it were so when it comes to good old, taste. So did you have to do some research? I did. Yeah. I have in my home now all from 1974, every copy of Vogue, every copy of Architectural Digest, <laughs> a Gourmet, name a magazine, I've got it. I put the Cosmos away because I have teenage daughters and they were way, I was like, oh! Mm -hmm. <laughs> but other than that, I have them all. Well, see, and I, and I think it's important because I think sometimes, you know, when somebody writes a historical novel mm -hmm. or, or a, 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 a really, mm -hmm. I mean, a, a, a history book, they have to do a lot of research. And I don't think it dawns on people that just because you write a mystery or um, a, um, you know, a frivolous novel of some sort, you don't have to do research because you do. Mm -hmm. And this is not frivolous. This takes a lot of work. Well, I am really fortunate that I could buy all my primary research on eBay because really that yeah. I could just go buy any magazine I wanted yeah. and and I could go back and read and all the best too much money. Right. And I could read all the best sellers from yeah. that year and watch the television and all that good stuff. Okay, here's another 70s issue that you flesh out in this book which I thought was kind of interesting was the mother-daughter relationship. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit, because I don't think that relationship is so prevalent now. Well, in the 70s, and certainly in that strata of society, you know, the way to happiness was a happy marriage for a woman. Um, the idea that a woman could go out and get a job and be independent and not have a man to support her was certainly not nearly as acceptable as it is now. And mother, or um, Frances, wants her daughter to be happy. And the only way she can imagine happiness for Ellison is to be in a happy marriage, or at least be in a marriage. Um, to a successful person. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and so the mother, um, I don't want to use their word inflict, but it is really probably a, a, a good word, her thinking on her daughter, and Ellison fights back, but... Mm. I think she gets strong. Well, obviously, she gets, she gets stronger as the book. 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 Yes. Yeah, that's the character Tr arc. Trouble, <laughs> trouble builds character. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
But and Ellison and and her husband were not happily married. No. But this is another issue that isn't so true anymore. They decided to stay married until the daughter went to college. Right. And I know people who do that today. Oh, to this of course day. you do. Mm -hmm. Of course you do. Of course you do. But I think that country club mentality um, is more and more a thing of the past. I do. And I think that um, the world is changing pretty fast around us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, was, it was fun to read that part of the book, too, because other than the mystery plot, you talk about a lot of things uh, of the 70s. Which, uh, and you mm -hmm. build a good, a good set around the, the, the play, as it mm -hmm. were. Now, here's another thing I want to discuss. You chose your characters, but you gave them kind of interesting names. One of them is Biddy, mm -hmm. and I love that. And the Biddy Sue. <laughs> Biddy, yes, Biddy Sue. And uh, the other one, the detective's name is Anarchy Jones. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you come up with Anarchy Jones? Well, as I mentioned, he's a rule follower. And, you know, how do you get somebody who is, you know, that much of a rule follower. Well, you know, in my mind, the, the backstory that I don't think ever has showed up is that Anarchy's father is a um, politics professor at Berkeley. And he named his son Anarchy. And the only way Anarchy could rebel was to be a rule follower. And the worst possible job that a father, his father could have picked for him was policeman. So there you have it. So Anarchy and the person are something of an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. And uh, you also, um, and, and how about naming the characters? Is that difficult, or do you just pop up with something? Because Biddy Sue is really good. I, you know, I, um, I just kind of pop, you know, if I just make sure it fits and that it okay. feels right. Okay. Also, it's interesting because as a as a dedicated mystery reader, I look for foreshadows, and you do do that mm -hmm. in the book. Um, and one of them, it says, I opened the door to the car, fingered my keys. You said Aggie could look into it. I was eager to get away, so eager, I didn't care about the list anymore. Talk about your huge mistakes. Now there's a good, and you do that. Mm -hmm. You'll have a little sentence in there like, talk about your huge mistakes. And that tells me, oh boy, this is not going to be the mm -hmm. best day she ever had. Well. And the days get worse as they go <laughs> I <know>. So <laughs> at the end, I think she's contemplating jumping in the pool with the mistress. But I, but I see those foreshadows, I think, are interesting because then you look for something, mm -hmm. you see. And um, uh, how do you, you know, you have a lot of characters in here. I do. How do you put the plot together without dropping a stitch? Do you use a, a storyboard? Do you use, what do you do? Because it's easy to drop a stitch here. I have a good editor. And, um, you know, that book, really, there were very few edits on it. So I kept it in my head. And I write to plot points, so I know where I'm going. But other than that. Okay, now, here we go. So you have some plot points. It's mm -hmm. like point A, point B, point C. But you don't have numbers of pages in between those points, do you? I kind of know how far they need to. Percentage-wise, I know you? kind of where things. That's your that's your training as a romance novel mm -hmm. writer. Well, yeah, but that I think holds true for any genre fiction is yeah. that you're going to have plot points that appear at certain times, and you have to know when to pull the trigger on the ending, mm -hmm. because if you drag on that, that's not good either. No. So yeah, so so you do you do set up. Here, here we have the cast of characters. Mm -hmm. Here we've built a set around them, this country club. And then we put the plot. Is that the order in which you do things, put the plot together? You know, I sort of, well, but the first one I had an idea of the characters. And I really did walk a lot into the mist with that. I knew that probably 50% of the way in, somebody else was going to have to die. Mm -hmm. um, and. You know, in a perfectly written book, and that's not perfect, but in a perfectly written book, the plot and the character arc sort of mirror each other. You know, one step forward, two steps back. Mm -hmm. You know, she's got to go forward because, you know, mm -hmm. her old life is no longer available. You know, you know might be that, you know, somebody's dead. Um, and that sort of thing. Jones is becoming more and more interesting <laughs> as we move along. <laughs> yes. That too. Yes, mm -hmm. that too. And so I, 
but 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 it's easy. I, I know it is to drop a stitch as you go along and say something that is too soon or too late or you know those plot points do help. Mm -hmm. They really do. And do you consult those as you go along? I write in a linear fashion, so mm -hmm. I write you know chapter one, two, three, four, five, six. I know people who don't. I could not write that way. Well. That w I would find that sort of hard. Sometimes I will write, I don't write books, but I do write talks. And sometimes I write the end before I start out. Mm -hmm. In other words, I, you got to get out of this thing somehow. And, uh, and, it ha and it's just like anything else. The book has to flow. And if it doesn't flow, it, if it goes like this, mm -mm, mm -hmm. it has to, to go along evenly. And that's not as easy as it might look. Yeah. So you've done a you've done a really good job. Now I have to ask you this question: Do you know any of these people personally that are in this book? The dog, the, the, the dog. <laughs> the dog is my dog. Uh -huh. um, I the, everybody else is sort of an amalgamation of people that you knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I would guess that's true because I I think <sighs> to be an author or to create whatever you draw on who you are, too. Mm -hmm. um, you're not Ellison. No. no. Mm -mm. So, but, is, but there may be something about her that is you, or, or maybe your sister, or maybe your mother, or, you know, just parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my poor mother gets asked that a lot. Oh, I bet she does. <laughs> what does she say? She says no, which is true, because she is not Frances, so. <laughs> does she think it's funny? Mm-hmm. Oh, she does. I hope so. <laughs> she does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'd be terrible if she didn't think it was funny. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a comedian that publicly makes fun of their family and privately that's not the case at all. Yeah. So, yes. Now it's, and enough people know Mom that they know that she's not like that. Well, and but. the father is um, kind of interesting as well. And um, he must be parts of people that you have seen or heard or mm -hmm. met. When you meet somebody that you find interesting, mm -hmm. do you go home and write notes about that person? So that you might use them or parts of them? In a, a little bit. Um, it's, you know, if somebody does something that is really interesting or annoying, I certainly make note of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing that I, know, I, I don't know why I note this, because there's no earthly reason for me to do that, but people's names sometimes. I'll see a name and I think, oh, that would make a good name in a book or a something mm -hmm. like Do you keep a list of names? Do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, it's just because I kill people off regularly. I yeah. need a constant supply. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the book without giving the plot away? Because I'm going to leave that up to you mm -hmm. because I don't want to. Um, I don't want to give that plot away because it's a good one. Well, you know, Ellison is um, an artist who is married to a banker, and she finds great success and actually makes more money than her husband and it causes an ir irreparable damage to her marriage. And as you said, she and her husband have decided to uh, stay together for their daughter Grace and Ellison gets up one morning and goes to the club before it opens and is swimming in the dark and swims in to a body and her, just her whole world falls apart from there. Because she knew the body. She knew the body. It was her husband's mistress, Madeline Harper. And she's, you know, she's kind of in a world of trouble because she's the best suspect. Not only is she caught with the dead body, but she has a really good motive for murder. Yeah. And then she looks even guiltier still a little bit later on. Well, I always read the back of the book. This is good. Uh, it says, as the body count approaches par on the seventh, <laughs> on the seventh hole, mm -hmm. Ellison knows she has to catch a killer. But with an interfering mother, an adoring father, a teenage daughter, and a cadre of well-meaning friends demanding her attention. Can Ellison find the killer before he finds her? Mm -hmm. And at some point in the book, she's in danger. Mm -hmm. And everybody who knows Kansas City was like, oh, yeah, I could totally see that, So, which is fun. And you didn't ask, but one of the questions I'm most often asked is which country club? And again, it's an I amalgamation. Because, I didn't, I, because I don't think that. If, I knew you wouldn't name one, one right. and you wouldn't want to, and I would not want you to. Mm -hmm. But I think the mentality of the country club right. is an amalgam mm -hmm. of 
country club mentalities uh, with a day past. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes it interesting because it is a peek into um, a life that everybody has not experienced. Well, that's, I think, one of the things that is fun about reading is that you get to peek behind the curtain and see something that maybe you don't know or not familiar with, and that's what I tried to do with that. Well, yeah, and, and you peek around the curtain of people's soul to, to some degree. I mean, you know, what motivates, what do you think motivates people to murder? Um, jealousy, greed. Um, and anger probably are the there top three. So those things are part of the plot that you construct, jealousy, greed, anger. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what makes a murder mystery. I think you have to have a really good reason for murder. I find <laughs> serial, well, I find serial killer murders, you know, those books, uh -huh. <coughs> excuse me, a little bit, you know, because the murder is so evil the, well, they're crazy. I it's mean, not, you know, yeah, the yeah. sociopath is just so evil. But if you have somebody who's maybe not so evil and just does one evil thing, then that's a little bit more interesting. That's the killer in this book, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. But he has murdered more than once. Mm. Bad idea. Yeah, well, he should have <laughs> stopped. He should have stopped, yes. He should have stopped at one. <laughs> so so what is, and now you have four books, and the mm -hmm. latest one's going to be published in October, mm -hmm. and um, Barnes & Noble carries your book. Barnes Amazon. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, online. Um, Vivian Jennings at Rainy Day has okay. them in stock, signed copies in stock all the time. I got those at Barnes & Noble, so. Mm -hmm. But they're all over, and I, I really, so what is in the future for Julie Mulhern? Well, hopefully more books. I'm contracted through nine, so I've got oh. a few more to write. You have to go home and get busy. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you have nine more. Is that pressureful? Boy, I don't know. No, I really, I really kind of love, love writing about Ellison, so it's fun. You think you'll, she'll last through all nine books? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, um... <laughs> I think, I think I have to read this. I, the, the things on the back of the book are funny. Um, it says um, she's Ellison is a Kansas City Navy native, and she spends her spare time whipping up gourmet meals for her family, working out in the gym, and finding new ways to keep her house spotlessly clean. And she's got an active imagination. The truth is, she's an expert at calling for takeout. She grumbles about walking the dog and the dust bunnies under the bed have grown into dust lions. Mm -hmm. And I think we can all, <laughs> we can all relate to that. But I would suggest that you read, start with the, with the first one, and uh, then uh, work your way through the first four, because Julie has done a really nice job of writing a book that will afford you some really nice afternoons of reading. Mm -hmm. So, Welcome to the club, it says. Thank, Thank you, you for Julie. having me. Thank you. It was a pleasure. <laughs>